Hello everyone, my name is Megan Lavota and I'm an ENFJ and today I'm going to be talking about how to manage the INFJ employee. Um, I'm going to be linking below um, or somewhere around here, I don't know. Uh, there's a playlist on this. I'm sort of in the middle of it. This is my second video I've done, but I want to give any potential employers or managers uh, or whatever uh, this could even be at school if you are having to manage a, someone, even if it's not for a business or job situation. I want to give sort of an overview, if you are working with an INFJ, how they would prefer to be managed. So if you aren't super familiar, INFJs are introverted, intuitive, feeling, and judging. Uh, but if you're clicking on this video and you're new to Myers-Briggs or... Uh, cognitive functions, you might not know that there are actually um, eight cognitive functions that all um, all personalities use. I would encourage you to look that up and do some of your own research on that. But the gist is that INFJs use introverted intuition, extroverted feeling, and then their lower down functions are introverted thinking and extroverted sensing. So INFJs, they are introverted, but that doesn't mean that they can't be a leader. Um, if you are hiring an INFJ for a entry level position, chances are they are going to want every, all of their expectations to be completely clear. They may want to show, they may want to like shadow you and like see exactly what the job is because they do learn well from just sort of seeing something done as opposed to reading like a bullet point thing because these sort of details and like step-by-step -step, um, procedures can get kind of confusing for an INFJ unless, um, unless they are actually shadowing what's supposed to be done or unless there's like this very clear, candid communication about what those expectations are. If an INFJ is getting a new job, chances are they wanna know exactly what they're supposed to do so that then and they can break the rules later. Not that they're rule breakers, I'm not saying that. Whoops. But um, they do want to know what is expected and then they'll go from, from there. They wanna like learn exactly. And so they can be kind of incessant with their questions that they're asking or if they aren't asking questions because they might be too shy to say, they're gonna be asking their coworkers, hey, like, so what's it really like? Um, like, um, doing this task, like, so give me like the download, like what, what should I really expect? Because INFJs aren't really going to enjoy just sort of going into a new environment. Like they dip their toe in the water versus just doing a cannonball in, uh, the pool and seeing how it goes. They definitely want to dip their toe in and sort of ease their way into things. Uh, because what they really don't want is to let anyone down. And they really do not want to do something wrong that they could have prevented. And so INFJs might not be the fastest uh, people to train. But when they do know what is expected of them, they are going to make sure that everything they do has such high integrity um, and they're going to do the job right. They, they can be very, they value ethics. So not all of them are going to be great people, but if they do care about what they're doing, they are going to really value those ethics. Um, I think a good example of an INFJ, uh, for those of you who don't know um, really what that's like, I think that Chidi from The Good Place is an INFJ. And the INFJs, they aren't always great people, but they do tend to always really care about being a good person. So take that as you will. Like, at worst, they can be kind of like cheaty and like overthink everything and then not deliver. But that's why I'm telling you like up front, if you are hiring an INFJ, you need to make everything clear because they are not going to want to take any guesses. And if you expect them to be adaptable and making guesses and just figuring out how to get the job done, uh, they might be a little slow at that. Uh, I'm an ENFJ and I struggle with this as well. Um, 
The main difference between us is that I might be more likely to complain to the boss and say, I don't know what I'm doing. Like you have to do a better job or something. Whereas an INFJ might be afraid to mention it and um, try and figure it out themselves. Um, and so that can, that can take some time. So the onboarding process is probably even more important for an INFJ than, than many people. Um, because yeah, and then once they get into the hang of things, they are very independent workers. They don't need to ask questions. And so it's sort of this weird back and forth where if you aren't used to the INFJ personality or if you've not managed one before, or you might have them and then wonder if, is this going to be a difficult person? Like, why are they asking so many questions? Um, that is just temporary. Like, they just need to know what's going on and then they're going to probably be the easiest workers you can ever imagine because they think for themselves and they value doing the right thing. They aren't as driven by numbers or meeting the bottom line of the deadline, but they are driven by making you as the boss happy um, because they don't want any drama and they, uh, their NI is sort of seeing the potential issues that could come up. And they are introverts, and so it's more draining for them to explain themselves and use their extroverted feeling and smooth things over. Even though they are very great mediators, they would so much rather just prevent the problem uh, from happening in the first place. And so that's why they really want to, like I keep saying, they want to know where you're coming from, and they want to be on the same page as you they are not on the same page as you, they're going to get very stressed out. And similar to what I explained in the ENFJ video about how to manage an ENFJ, uh, INFJs really want a strong mission or why behind what they're doing. And they are going to find, they'll probably find that if they're not emotionally motivated to um, do the job, they probably won't do as good of a job. And sometimes this can fluctuate and so if you are not showing your INFJ that you appreciate them, and if you if there's not a good work environment, um, this would be one of those types where they can very, very well just quit on the spot. Uh, they might be ruminating about it for months. And you if you're a boss, it's not really paying attention to if they're enjoying themselves or not. You might not even notice and you might think that they're being very impulsive. But they aren't impulsive. They're very, very thoughtful. And INFJs can tell if you have their best interests at heart. And they can tell if you as a manager are actually making decisions based on their employees. And they might, as opposed to an ENFJ like me, like who would be more likely to complain or whine or say, hey, you aren't, um, you aren't paying attention to your employees or whatever. An INFJ can just very slowly build resentment. And they think that it should be obvious that you are prioritizing their needs. And if you aren't prioritizing their needs, they're going to get resentful. And they aren't going to produce, or they're not going to perform at their best. Um, but they won't care. Um, they, um, if they can very easily reach this point where they don't care and they're just going in for a paycheck. And they also can very much reach this detached state where it's like, I just need my money. They don't care about me. And so I'm not going to care about you. And if you don't care about them, then they can be very sneaky and just sort of break the rules in ways where they know that you won't notice because they are very good at seeing what you're focused on. So if they don't think that you care about them and if you aren't regularly checking up on them, they are a personality that would maybe... Uh, dilly dally around all day and like be on Facebook or be doing something else doing something for their life um if if they aren't like motivated to care um I'm not saying that they're easily distracted but they know how to work situations and they're very good at reading people and so that's why I'm saying that it's so important for the onboarding process to establish a good relationship with the INFJ, let them know what's expected. I think they would benefit from regular check-ins as well. Because sometimes they might grow resentment and it's kind of unfair onto you. Um, for example, 
let's say an INFJ, okay, that since they are less likely to speak up because they, you know, they don't want to start drama. They don't want to have to deal with like an emotionally draining conversation because when they do enter those conversations, they put the weight of the world on their shoulders and they will be extremely empathetic. And so they don't necessarily want to do that because it's exhausting sometimes. And so they're going to be more in their head focusing on avoiding that. But if they, so they're less likely to bring up things, but because they have an extroverted thinking blind spot, they also are not as aware of if it's a structural problem or if it's a them problem. And so if there are problems in the structure of the way that the team is set up, they are very likely to just put all of the responsibility and blame onto themselves and not notify their manager if there's a problem. Uh, you could. You, it's very common for INFJs to work long hours and have very bad boundaries and like work from home without telling their boss because they're just trying to get sure uh, get everything done that needs to get done, or um, they are likely to take on more projects than they actually can complete um, if they if the structure is poor. So. If you have a feeling that your INFJ employee is overworked, I mean, regular check-ins are so, so, so important, especially with the INFJ, because you do not want them to get resentful. You do not want them to get disenfranchised and like detached, because if they are resentful, then they're not going to care about their work. They might sneak an error in like out of saltiness or like resentment, because maybe... Maybe they don't care if your business, if, if an INFJ doesn't care if your business, um, like, fails or survives, then that is bad. Uh, bad, bad, bad. So don't, like, have regular check-ins with them and ask them, like, is this too much work for you? Like, let them know that you don't want them to be overworked and that you want them to be at their best. Because if you want them to be at their best, then they're going to go completely out of their way to create amazing, amazing content or product or whatever, whatever it is your job is. Um, so yeah, um, they can get very easily overwhelmed uh, by things and they, they aren't the best as they are intuitives. Um, intuitives are really great idea people and they're very creative. INFJs in general are very innovative where they have this sort of leading edge, like they know where the trends are going. And if they don't feel like you as an employer knows where the trends are going, they may try and share their ideas a few times, but they might, if if you don't seem to care, if you don't take their ideas uh, seriously, they might just like in their heads be like, okay, whatever, this person's incompetent. I'm now switching my mindset to just going in here for a paycheck. Because if they aren't even going to try and be innovative and look at the trends, then I don't need to waste my breath sharing uh, those insights. Um, they're going to have to go through me and uh, or they're going to have to beg me for those insights because I don't want to waste my breath. Like that's very possible that they could do that. But yeah, they're all intuitives are all very creative. But the other side of being an intuitive is that they are less aware of the sensory world. And so that means that they might not know what their bodies are capable of. And so they might say yes to projects um, because they don't know how to say no, and also because they um, don't necessarily know how long it's going to take because they don't, they aren't as skilled as knowing in their brain or, or like in their mind sort of visualizing how long certain things take and they don't really, they can be idealistic and so they don't really incorporate obstacles or downtime in their uh, in their analysis or in their um, guesstimation so and a lot of times they they because of their bad sensing they don't really rem they don't really realize that some days they're going to be more tired than others some days they're going to have you know maybe something bad going on in the family or some relationship issue where they're going to be not really on and so they don't really plan for those things they plan for them to be at their best behavior like they're very idealistic like I said and so they can very easily have too high standards for themselves or to tell you these are my standards and then like 
be below them um, at all times because and that's why they might like overwork or work from home or like do these things because they just sort of when they get into an organization they're going to see all of the gaps of what that organization's missing and if they care enough about the mission so okay really there's the INFJ that cares about your mission and then there's the INFJ that doesn't care about your mission and those are two completely different people um so that's why as i start at the beginning make sure they care about your mission make sure they know where they stand with you if they care about your mission and they know where they stand with you then they are going to be complete overachievers and then probably stressing themselves out uh to the point where they're really going to need you to intervene and be like hey how's it going i mean i would recommend once a month at least uh check in with them let them know you care. Let them know that you are there to help. Like, be like, do you want training opportunities? Do you want a mentor? Like, what can I do to help you? Because they, sometimes if this is the INFJ that cares about the mission, they're gonna need someone to maybe tell them to relax or they're gonna need some sort of validation of like, hey, you're doing a great job. Like, don't stress yourself out. Um, like I know an INFJ that during one of her performance reviews, she rated herself completely low on everything because she's so hard on herself. And then the boss was like, no, actually you're doing fine. Like, why are you rating yourself so low? And then just that, just doing that has put so much stress off of the INFJ that now she's performing so much better. So INFJs can get really in their head and overthink a lot of things. Um, so again, I keep going back to the same point but again, because they overthink so much. That's why, uh, some sort of clear standard is so important. Uh, another thing about the INFJ, how do they prefer to work? They are, can be very skilled at running meetings, uh, cooperating, uh, brainstorming with people and all of that. But what I found is that a lot of them don't really want the pressure of that. They would rather like an ENFJ do that or some like an extrovert do that that they trust. Uh, they would rather not. They'd rather sort of be in the background of meetings and sort of soak up everything that's said so that they can get a clearer picture because they're going to focus on that intuitive vision above all else. They aren't going to be as focused on making sh managing the people and making sure everything's going smoothly in the external world. Uh, but their best ideas are gonna come from observing. So if you, even if they don't wanna participate much in a meeting, putting them in meetings so that they can get more information about how things go, they're gonna ruminate on that like in the background whenever they're doing other things. Um, and also, um, they're very independent. So like if they kinda need their focus, um, a lot of them like jobs where they do just get to sit, listen to music, um, and just do their job without being bothered. Even though they do like, they like to feel like they're in a community, but they don't want to be distracted as much. For example, like I am very similar to an INFJ. Go watch the ENFJ video if you'd like to sort of compare. But this is one thing where I very much differ from them, where I, as an ENFJ, I really like meetings. I I love being in meetings. A lot of INFJs complain about being in meetings because it breaks up their flow of concentration. They are such deep thinkers and they are very wise uh, in how and in, in perceptive that they can't and they, they aren't that skilled at popping in from doing one thing to the other to the other where for me I'm like oh I'd like to do a little bit of social media a little bit of writing a little bit of talking like I need my I, I I don't have the same amount of focus that I like need my days to be broken up like that but INFJs a couple of my friends in particular that are writers um they work in open office places where they are writers and they get very annoyed when people go up to them and just talk about stuff unless it's important um uh, they can be, INFJs can be those people that are the most fun and interesting people to talk to at the work happy hour. Like it's not that they don't like people, they just need to focus. And so 
like send them a slack message send them an email send them some sort of message whatever you do before you go over and talk to them because that's rude like don't distract them they're doing something important and if they are one of those infjs that does care about the mission then yeah they find it important they they don't want to be bothered like everything they're doing is intentional so if anyone is sort of acting like things aren't intentional or whatever like that's not true like infjs they have a rhyme or reason to why they do everything and if you're not sure why they're doing something ask them because they have a reason why and they know the reason why um they don't do anything willy-nilly like at all so it is kind of rude to break up their uh their flow um they want to get in the flow and I'm not saying that no INFJ is going to want any sort of job that includes meetings because a lot of them, uh, it depends on what they're trying to do. Like, okay, for example, I'm not trying to talk about me that much, but like as an ENFJ, I prefer speaking. I am, I have a journalism major or I, I have a bachelor's degree in journalism. And so I had jobs where all I had to do was sit down and write. Um, and it, is hard for me to focus in that way. But because I care about what I'm writing about, you know, I if I have enough of an emotion there that I can propel myself and I can do a good job writing. And so I don't want anyone listening to this to get the wrong idea and think that they shouldn't be hiring INFJs for leadership positions or for manager positions because they can do it. I mean, if I'm expected to sit in quiet and get things done, like, think about it. Like, I mean, there's a lot of bias when it comes to, um, some people use the Myers-Briggs for the wrong reasons and they will uh, make people take the test just for hiring purposes. And I'm completely against that, just to say, because think about, it's, it's unfair to say that an introvert can't be good at presentations and leading and managing people because all of these extroverts um, I was expected to sit and write essays uh, before I graduated, you know, college and stuff. I've had to sit still in a room and just study before. Like, I've done it. It's not my favorite thing, but I've done it and I'm capable of it. And so it's not fair to say that an introvert is not going to be capable of interacting with people, especially if it fits their career mission and what they want to do. Um, INFJs are not likely to be the sort of people that just are wanting to be a salesman just like as their career unless it fits something else that they are interested in um i see them more as enjoying like customer success and things like that if they were to be on a front-facing um uh career but um yeah so i guess i'm saying that they aren't likely to want to talk to people just for the sake of talking people uh talking to people in their career but they are very capable of doing it if that's what they want to do. So, um, yeah, so don't discriminate against introverts if they're applying for a position like that. So, yeah, um, they're independent, they're focused, they, they just want, just communicate with them. And that is sort of a given, like, for every um personality that you should communicate with them and i know i said something like this similar in the enfj video but i really do think that enfj and infj are the two types where they you really need to communicate with them you need to let them know what they're doing that's right what they're doing that's wrong or else they're going to just waste a lot of your time worrying about it or making the wrong decision because we're like infjs aren't going to want to guess they aren't going to just want to like look around and like figure it out or observe what other people are doing and copy that. They, they aren't going to do that. Like I think that NFPs and NTPs are very skilled at being adaptable, and just going into a new environment. I worked at a few startups and something that I was not um, as skilled at was just figuring out how things go like if it wasn't a clear process. And INFJs um, are not that great at uh, uh, that as well. Like either we're not that great or we're just snow slow learners because eventually we learn like once an INFJ learns then they're pretty much like independent on their own like you won't have to worry about them at all 
So yeah, it really is just that the beginning process. Make sure that as they're dipping their towing, that they're having a positive experience, that once they learn how to swim, they're gonna be a very easy employee to manage and one that is going to really bring a lot of amazing ideas and innovative ways of thinking. They're also very good at processes and like seeing like the flow of communication and the flow of ideas that can be very streamlined and focused. And so, yeah, um, that is what I would suggest to anyone that is managing an INFJ. Um, yeah, give them feedback and, you know, anything that you can do to make your INFJ employee be one that is, um, for your mission and not like a not uh, resentful and disenchanted and overwhelmed and salty that would be great and if you are just clear with them from the get-go then they will be able to decide quickly if like hopefully if they don't fit with their mission then they can quit sooner rather than later so anyway thank you for watching this video uh playlist linked below if you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one for consulting or anything like that like, if you want me to help you with a specific situation that you're dealing with, I have links like that below. So thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.